We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome to LA Progressive Live, where we delve deep into issues of progressive politics and social justice. This is your host, Sharon Kyle, in studio, as always, with my husband and co-host, Dick Price. Should be an interesting show today. We're going to talk, just the two of us are going to talk about Memorial Day, how, how it started, what it means, how it's observed today, uh, issues around the military, and then uh, issues around uh, today's news. Great, great. Well, um, I'd like to say, I don't know if, if it's appropriate to say Happy Memorial Day, but today is Memorial Day. It is the uh, fourth Monday of May, right. 2015. Yeah, you know, and I was uh, in, in thinking about today's show, I was reflecting on, I, I've never been much of a joiner, and I am a Vietnam veteran, and I was never much for parades, and other than a, a brief uh, sojourn with the Vietnam Veterans of America Association, I haven't been much of a joiner. But the way I, I did like to honor uh, my fellow Vietnam veterans who died, uh, for many years, I, I worked for two decades. I worked for a nonprofit organization headquartered in Washington D.C., and and I would visit the headquarters two, three, six, eight times a year. And almost every time, I would slip out in the evening after my meetings and go down to the Vietnam Memorial, where I took you and my daughter one time. And and oftentimes, since it would be at night, kind of late, often I would I would be alone. And I and it is lit. It's the 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 lovely anti-memorial memorial which is so totally appropriate for the Vietnam War uh, and I would I would search out I would read all uh, the 55,000 names of the soldiers who, who soldiers Marines sailors and so forth who gave their lives in 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 what they hoped I think was some some way defense of our country yeah and yeah, so you, you actually, um, my very first time visiting that uh, memorial was with you, but we've, we've been actually more than twice, uh, at least three times. And although um, I don't know very many of the names on the wall, I did know one name. And each time we've gone, um, I go and I get the piece of paper. They, they give you a piece of paper and they give you a pencil. And right. then they'll tell you what section of the wall right. to find the name of the, uh, the friend or family member or loved one um, who lost their life. Right. The memorial is organized by, by date that the person was killed. I just meant there was one trip when we took my daughter, That's Lania, right. who's uh, going to be graduating in two weeks from UC Riverside. And and I, it was a touching time for all of us. I, I think I even even all those times that I visited that memorial, I would I would tear up. I would tear up because it, it brings back, you know, I, I indicated it's kind of an anti-memorial memorial because uh, um, I mean, w the way the, the way we remember the Vietnam War is as kind of a a, a a national not disgrace, a national uh, a national tragedy that that we uh, deceived ourselves into fighting a war, telling ourselves that somehow we were bringing democracy and freedom to Southeast Asia. When those of us who were there, and I think many people in the decades since, have seen. That isn't really what went on, and and just 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 over the weekend, news came out that uh, Richard Nixon uh, uh, committed a, a treason by uh, sa sabotaging the Paris Peace Talk so that he could get elected. There was a lot of a lot of dishonesty, uh, and and the sad thing the sad thing for me is that you know here these many years later uh, we're in the 14th year of, of invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq there that are equally as troubling we were talking on on the drive down that President Obama is you know saying this is the first time in 14 years that we haven't been in active combat in, in a war and yet we have 10,000 troops in in Afghanistan maybe they're not fighting every day but they're fighting their their lives are in jeopardy and certainly there are people who are dying maybe not as many right. or as often 
um, you know, at the same level of frequency as it was when we initially went into Afghanistan. But whether you call it a war or don't call it a war, someone is still losing a loved one and someone is losing their life. Yeah, so I and I was thinking, you know, uh, next week we won't have a show because uh, we're taking a three-part trip. But one part of it is is to uh, visit my dad in Florida, who was uh, very proud of his rather lengthy service in World War II. I've said before on this show we were he was wounded in exactly the same place on his lower on his lower right leg that I was 25 years later. Um, And I was reflecting, you know, his generation, he's not a very bellicose man. I mean, he's a music professor of all things. But he did serve 30 years in in the active service and the reserves. And and his generation, you know, it was it was it was what made the, the the greatest generation, which we like to say. It's because the whole country pulled together to fight World War II. There were very few people, very few protested it on on usually on on moral grounds, and 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 then there was a, a relatively small group of people who who profited. Uh, war profiteers, uh, and and I remember that was I remember the look on my dad's face. There was a one of the owners of one of the NFL football teams was apparently one of these war profiteers, and he had this look of utter disgust, you know. And w- w- when did he have this look of utter disgust? Oh, when we're talking about it years, you know, years later. I mean, uh, in in a way, the fact that both of us served in the military brought us back closer together. I had a troubled youth and and uh, we were divided and that that pulled us back together but you know um well one of the topics that i want to talk about is 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 the difference now is a, a very tiny percentage of americans uh bear the brunt of the wars that we choose to fight uh and they they uh, there was a lovely article in today's la times about how 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 small that sliver of people is and 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 a part of it is we have an economic draft uh and so that people who don't have recourse uh to get decent jobs or go to college the military offers uh, a a fairly attractive alternative f- fraught with great risk but it is you know if you can survive it uh, physically and psychically, it is, it, 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 you know, free health care, uh, 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 subsidized housing, a pension once you're done with it. But then the other part of the article... But hold on. Okay, I, I'd like to interject here. Yeah, yeah. So um, there is a great general um, who has long since passed away. His name is Smedley Butler. And he talks about there should only be two reasons that someone should join the military and fight in a war. And that is to protect your home and to protect your civil liberties. You shouldn't be joining the military to get a job, to get an education, to get some kind of uh, medical benefit. That should never be your objective. If we live in the type of society where whole swaths of the population can only get those benefits by agreeing to give their lives in war, we got a very, very sick society, and we need to fix that. Well, I don't dispute that at all. Yeah, Smedley Butler was twice awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, one of the few people ever to have that happen at one time, and maybe even currently he was the most decorated veteran. He was a Marine in World War I and afterwards. Yeah, I don't dispute. I think you're absolutely right, but but it is a fact that, that, that there is an economic draft, and it is, it is a way that they fill up the ranks. But then the, the, the article, uh, the L.A. Times article, also went into that it's a family tradition. The, something like 80% of the current uh, people serving in the military are are in a family, their parents, their grandparents. Uh, they talked about one lady whose who's, uh, grandfather served in an all-black unit in World War I and every generation since. Um, and and the and the problem with that is you know uh, even even in Vietnam there only only a certain segment of society served in Vietnam but everybody was engaged partly because everybody had skin in the game everybody every man every young man uh, faced the potential of a draft and and a lot of women were involved in the anti-war movement so the country was engaged in Vietnam in the way that we just have not been invade engaged in Iraq and and Afghanistan. 
Okay, so yes, um, there was a lot more, absolutely, a lot more engagement during the Vietnam era than there is today. I don't know if that's something that we necessarily want to repeat. However, I will say that as much engagement as there was, there were also a tremendous amount of people that were getting deferments. And, and, and the engagement or those who were getting the deferments, because we talked about 